Danger Dolan. From rhythm games based on RPGs to television simulators where it really feels like you're watching a TV, we count 15 outrageous, unbelievably unnecessary spin-offs to beloved gaming franchises. Number 10. Hey You Pikachu for the N64. We're all familiar with the Pokemon cash grabs from the days when it was big, and this is a game that barely registers with the franchise as a whole. Basically, you get a microphone add-on called a VRU, a yellow ball for your controller, through which you can talk to Pikachu as if he were real and not just a bunch of polygons on a screen. The problem was, the microphone sucked ass, and this is the only game to ever use it, so you would be yelling for Pikachu to collect some fish, and then he would just stare at you for hours. Such fun. Number 9. Doge of Cerberus for the PlayStation 2. A spin-off of the massively successful PlayStation RPG Final Fantasy VII, but in pretty much all the wrong ways. The main character wasn't just a side character in the series, he was entirely optional and most people didn't even know who he was. Instead of an RPG, this game was a third person shooter, a genre Square Enix had never attempted before. And it showed! The AI was a mess, the level design was shoddy, an overabundance of cutscenes that didn't advance the already convoluted and dull storyline, with mainly side or barely existent characters from Final Fantasy VII as the stars. What we want is a Final Fantasy VII remake, not this garbled spin-off mess. Number 8. Typing of the Dead. People actually sat down in a boardroom and thought, gee, you know what the House of the Dead franchise needs? A computer literacy element. So out comes this garbage where instead of shooting zombies, you type words to defeat them. Basically a type teaching simulator with zombies like you'd find in a primary school. But even worse is that the words and phrases weren't even decent. You got words like bang bang or ping pong, Socrates, Washington, and your mum. What an instant classic. Number 7. Shadow the Hedgehog. Here we go, the latest chunk of vomit spewed from the Sonic team. A grim dark spin-off for Shadow the Hedgehog with guns, motorcycles, explosions and other things that would be gnarly if the game didn't suck ass moisture. Most Sonic fans were fine with the series' light-hearted themes, and this attempt at a mature theme came off seriously desperate. Like Doja Cerberus, the team obviously weren't ready for shooter controls, since things like the homing attack led to a crap ton of your own character deaths, guns had a lousy auto-aim that made playing the game a chore. It's one of those games that appealed to the wrong demographic, and it even did that in terrible ways. Number 6. Hotel Mario. This is a Mario spin-off that Nintendo didn't even make. It was built for the Philips CDI, that console nobody owned. And this game was developed by Philips themselves to sell units. The gist of the game is, you're supposed to close doors to stop Bowser's hotel scheme from taking place. Okay? That's it. That's all you gotta do. You just gotta go around closing doors. Wired Magazine even went so far as to say that it's a puzzle game with no puzzles, just shutting doors in a timely manner. The worst part though? Animations. Ones that look like they were drawn in MS Paint with cringe-worthy voice acting and Luigi's infamous line. I hope she made lots of spaghetti! Number 5. Pac-Man 2. It was supposed to be the sequel to the hit arcade classic of Pac-Man, but this game instead became the hit sequel to Dog Turd. Pac-Man aimlessly wanders through a bright weekday morning cartoon, performing meaningless chores and looking too happy with himself. Meanwhile, you, the player, are in charge of slingshotting things so he can keep doing his own thing. That's right, you have no control over Pac-Man, you're just there to make sure he doesn't get stung by bees and the like. The game itself wasn't so bad, but nobody, not ever, thought Pac-Man needed more aesthetic or gameplay depth in the form of a cheesy side-scroller. Number 4. Theater Rhythm. Right from the word go, you knew this game had a very short life expectancy. It came off the success of Dissidia and its sequel for the PSP, and at the time, Square Enix secretly hoped this would turn into a worthy successor for the 3DS. A guitar hero using 13 games worth of tracks from all the Final Fantasy games. The characters were drawn with little bobble faces, rosy cheeks and beady eyes. The songs were just songs with a line to trace on the touchscreen. It was lazy beyond words, and it had the same logo as Dissidia, but cutesy, further pouring salt into the wound. 
Actually, no, this, is, this isn't this is a wound. It's an amputation, and they are pouring bourbon into the stump. Number three, Resident Evil Survivor, PlayStation era. Everyone has played at least one of the Resident Evil titles which helped popularize the survival horror genre. Back then, the controls were like that of a tank, so to turn around, you hold left and watch your character slowly spin. Then Capcom turned around and said, hey, let's try a first person shooter with exactly the same terrible controls. So they did. And you turn slow, you shoot slow, enemies have a ridiculous hitbox so it doesn't matter where you hit them. It was like putting a gun into a driving simulator and expecting people to aim while controlling every function of the car. This was a game a bit too ambitious for its time. Number two, Link's Crossbow Training, filled with development problems. Basically a bundle tutorial for the Wii Zapper to use motion controls as a weapon with the Zelda franchise slapped on top. But like all games that only last two minutes, critics panned it as a giant tease and that there just wasn't enough of an improvement from the Wiimote to the Zappa to warrant the game at all. And that the Zappa actually got in the way, making the game needlessly difficult. Miyamoto and his team almost didn't make the game at all, and they had to reuse Twilight Princess models and textures to bring it to life. A fine game for what it was, but highly unnecessary. Number 1. Pokemon Channel. This was a rush sequel to Hey You Pikachu, and from these words alone you know this game can't be good. It doesn't even have a genre, it's basically a television simulator designed to promote the Nintendo e-reader. A game for children under 5 who have no idea what's going on or what actual video games are. The only interactive element is collecting items in the world, and even that gets old within seconds, so the best thing you can do is switch on your virtual television and watch Pikachu watch television while you watch it on your television. Tons of replay value if you have the memory capacity of a goldfish. That is it for this countdown, have a good one!